can turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on this job. Now you're cute. I feel good. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. Happy Valentine's Day. This, of course, is a day of love. And this morning we want to salute some local couples. Love is in the air on this Valentine's Day. On our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page, we invited local couples to share their love photos. And here's a look at some of the great pictures we got. We hope you're all enjoying this special day. We not only got images of devoted couples, but several people took photos with their dog. Yes, their adoring pooch takes the center stage in their life. But let's face it, we all have to find love wherever we can find it. And while we're on the subject of pets, we spotlight a Glendale woman. She began her career working in genetic research at the Medical College of Wisconsin, but decided to make a commitment to her true passion, dogs. One trip to her Glendale home, it's clear. Jessica Ginster is a dog lover. Stop. Friends have even called her the dog whisperer. Poppy, sit. Her love of pooches is just one reason why she started Dog Walkie, a business training and boarding dogs. My services range from simple dog walking to um, behavioral corrections. And I actually have probably five dogs that have come that were puppies when they came. And they left walking on leash, sitting, laying down, and staying. And that was all done within one week. Gister says she's always had a special way with her four-legged friends. The dog and I would make a connection. I would sit down on the sofa, it would come and sit by me, and then I would just wait a few moments to see if it would allow me to pet it, and then all of a sudden we're best friends. And they're like, he's never done that before. So there's, there's this innate um, energy within me that I think allows me to resonate with dogs. In fact, it was her astute realization of one dog's bark that alerted her that something was wrong recently. I noticed his bark was different because dogs bark differently for different reasons. He gave me two quick yips and two quick yips is come here, there's something interesting. And I just said, what are you looking at? And I looked out the window and I said, oh my gosh. Ginster saw a dog close to drowning in the Milwaukee River. Immediately, I just went down on all fours and I crawled out on the ice. And then I had to lay myself, I had to like spread eagle to distribute my weight across the ice. And then I did the army crawl to the puppy where when I started getting closer to the puppy, I locked eyes with it and I just said, hold on hold on because it was at the point where it was just the nails were going to slip off i got to the top of the, the hill got to my car put him in the seat cranked the heat and he just hunkered down and just you know was like i'm so thankful i'm so cold just get me home ginster majored in philosophy and biology but now she's pursuing certification as an animal behavioral specialist. She shares this advice when it comes to teaching pups. It's going to require time. Just like children, it's easy to make children, but it's not easy to raise children. It's easy to buy a dog or to get a dog, but it's not easy to train a dog. Okay. And Jessica Ginster is in doggy heaven, knowing she can make a living doing what she loves. The satisfaction of empowering people to take control of their dog and strengthen that bond and that relationship so that it's not one based on fear, but one based on, okay, what can I do next to please you? It sparks a little something in me that's just like, oh, it's working, you know? <laughs> ah, you gotta love that. Now, Ginster even says, Dogs go through a phase much like teenagers where they rebel, but she says just stay the course and you will get through to them. If you'd like more information on Dog Walkie, just go to our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page. We have a link to her Facebook page. February is Heart Health Awareness Month, and a Wauwatosa woman has found a way to turn tragedy into helping fund cardiac research. Julia Fellow tells us how it's helping scientists at the Medical College of Wisconsin. This all began when the founder lost her husband, Steve Cullen, to a heart attack just days after he ran the Milwaukee Marathon. 
More than 20 years later, her heartbreak is helping mend others after creating a fund to further heart research. Something came along that took his life away. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, are experiencing the same thing with COVID. Which is why 100% of the money raised for their virtual run walk this year will be devoted to COVID heart-related research. Scientists at the Medical College of Wisconsin are grateful. I don't know that I've ever been a part of something that's been so relevant and that might actually help a lot of the things that are, are long-term looking at long-term fixes. Through a $30,000 grant from this run, cardiovascular researcher Dr. Z. Chung analyzed freighted hospital data and found hospitalized COVID-19 patients with high cholesterol were two times more likely to die. More spe specifically, the triglyceride levels and also the cholesterol levels causing the problems in the in the heart and also vascular system. Triglycerides are a type of fat found in your blood. For reasons Dr. Chung does not know yet, COVID-19 patients with high triglycerides are developing blood clots faster, causing heart attacks. This is something that we don't normally see in other infections. We're kind of looking at why people maybe have a more severe outcome. It's exciting that there, if you can find a link, then you can try then start breaking it down. In order to figure out the why, more experiments need to happen, which means more funding is needed. We pay to get the samples in order to do the experiments. Um, so without it, we wouldn't be able to do it. Over 25 years, the Colon Run has raised more than a half a million dollars to research like this. The hope is for more people to take part in this virtual run to be a small part in saving lives. Here's how to join in your rebound rundown. The Steve Cullen Healthy Heart Club Run Walk is taking place all month long this Heart Health Month. You can complete either the two-mile walk or 8K run anywhere you'd like. 100% of the money raised will go to the Medical College of Wisconsin's COVID heart-related research. Julia Fellow, TMJ4 News. And a great cause it is. Still ahead, a trailblazer in his field. How Milwaukee is honoring Wisconsin's first black architect see his children's pride. And as we go to a break, here's a bird's eye view of winter on Lake Michigan, brought to you by photojournalist Ryan Whitaker. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. The city of Milwaukee is honoring Wisconsin's first African-American architect by renaming one of the first buildings he designed. Sean Gallagher has a story. Alonzo Robinson came to Milwaukee from the East Coast in the 50s, telling his kids this is where the job took him. Now, over 60 years later, his fingerprints are all over the city, including this building right here behind me, Milwaukee Fire Department headquarters, which will soon bear his name. Our father left an indelible mark on the city of Milwaukee. Tuesday, I spoke with Alonzo Robinson's remaining children, Wayne, Jean, and Kim. They say they are elated this building will now have their father's name on it. While he passed away over 20 years ago, they hope this will help more people understand the impact he had on Milwaukee. We have people right here in the city of Milwaukee who have done tremendous things, and it's, it's due time now that those individuals here in Milwaukee are getting their recognition. His son, Kim, a former city employee himself, still lives in Milwaukee. He showed me the original blueprints for the Milwaukee Fire Department building with his dad's signature on it from 60 years ago. It was one of his first of hundreds of buildings he designed in the Milwaukee area. Kim says his father came here from Delaware in the 50s. And in a time before desegregation and civil rights, he rose to prominence. He made an example by doing that, that no matter where you go in life or where you are, you can be whatever you want to be. Just follow your dream and don't let anyone get in the way of what you're trying to do. It must have been in incredibly difficult uh, for him to be able to accomplish what he did. Common Council President Cavalier Johnson says before he was approached by the Robinson family, he had never heard of Alonzo. But he says, especially during Black History Month, it's important to recognize the incredible work everyday people have done in this city and the impact that will have on the future. That, I think, helps to instill into young people a sense of passion and a sense of promise about tomorrow. That if you dream it, 
you can't achieve it. The Robinson family says this is far from the only legacy in their father's name. There are many churches in the city, like Mount Carmel near 17th and Meineke. They also give an annual scholarship to young aspiring architects of color. Having his name on that building, uh, it hopefully will increase exposure to uh, not just young people, but to everybody about the field of architecture. Alonzo Robinson's daughter, Jean, hopes having his name on this building will help increase diversity in the field, a field traditionally dominated by white people. Only 2% of architects nationwide are black. We are thrilled that hopefully having his name on that building will motivate or incentivize at least one young person to say, who is Alonzo Robinson and what did he do? And hopefully when the answer is he was an architect, uh, that will at least encourage those young persons of color to explore the field of architecture. No doubt it will. His kids all say all of Robinson's success would not be possible without his wife, Teresa. A remarkable contribution to Milwaukee's black history. Well, the cold weather is giving some animals a reason to smile. It may be cold out there, but we found some frosty felines who are not letting the snow slow them down. Check out these pictures. The tiger and snow leopard, they're just bouncing around in the snow at the Milwaukee County Zoo. They were having a good time and uh, just watching them have their playful energy and be out there certainly warms our heart and we certainly need it on these frigid days. And speaking of reasons to smile, we are closing in on one year since we debuted our Positive in Milwaukee show. Still ahead, we're going to take a look back at the year of hopeful and amazing stories from wonderful people who happen to be our neighbors. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. I really can't believe this show marks our one year anniversary. We actually started this in response to you because you told us you just wanted more positive news and TMJ4 made a commitment. Right now we're going to look back at some of the stories we captured in our first year of Positively Milwaukee. February of this year we debuted a new show here on TMJ4, Positively Milwaukee with Carol Meekins. Our aim is simple remind you of the wonderful people making our world better. People who refuse to give in to hate. Once we sat down and we talked and we realized, man, this, you know, this is my long lost brother. And I'm, you know, and, and, and we're, we're like family now. City of Milwaukee is going to be a launching pad for um, solutions, working towards the cure for hatred. You met people who made us smile. Is there any advice you can give to other older people who might need a little inspiration? You're not dead yet. <laughs> you know, it's simple as that, you know. And say God gave us life, what we do with it is our gift back to him. So we need to get out there and let the world know that we are still valuable. Those who made us think. And we need women to come into this engineering workforce. We need their experiences, their viewpoints, the way they experience the world, the way they think about the world, um, the way they problem solve is really important in terms of making us more innovative as a profession. You must base your life upon what you do have, what you don't have. So you can't reclaim what you don't have. We can't cause ourselves to get traits that we wish to have that we can't alter. And yet, we have enough things that we do have that we can't benefit from to where it's important to focus on those. Because if not, then life has essentially no meaning. You saw kind souls devoting their lives to keeping others safe. I know I can't save the world. I can't, but I be trying. <laughs> I do. I can see somebody out there and I talk to them. I start, I start off, how you doing? And then I, I don't know, it's just something about that I can feel their spirit. And then I just have a conversation and I try to direct them to some places where I think that can help them. I don't get up in the morning and go, oh my God, this is going to be a terrible day. I get up in the morning and say, we're going to help somebody today. Let's get it going. <laughs> we shared stories of people giving unselfishly. And if every person who donates their kidney can inspire one more person, it'll be like a chain reaction. I pay her back the same way she raised me up. She raised me up the right way and told, told me uh, what's right and wrong. And, and to stay in school. And so I just paid her back by taking good care of her now. And we helped each other get through the global pandemic. I believe there is a message from God to us. First of all, I think that we had become very selfish. 
self-centered. We've become unpersonal in that we think only of ourselves a lot of time. I think it's an opportunity for families to re-engage. As much as my daughter misses me, I hope that, I'm gonna get emotional, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, gosh, I hope that one day she looks at this and understands what it means to serve others and understands what it means to make a sacrifice. And I hope that she is inspired by this um, and that she remembers this time. We will try to get back to you, either direct you to the right resource or we'll try to take care of it ourselves. There are a lot of people doing some great stuff in the city. A lot of people who are not getting the credit, don't or shy from it or don't want the credit, not getting accolades. I to thank you to them. You saw people committed to helping our youth. What would you like to say to the people who are really giving these kids a gift? So basically, I would just like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. When I say it takes a village, really the village has answered. I just really want to connect. I want to be remembered and hopefully in a good way. It's got to feel intrinsically good to your soul knowing that you are actually helping these young kids soar. Yes, and it's ironic to me because it's a pay it forward opportunity. I don't know where I would have been that my that sisterhood, that community, without them, I don't I don't think I would be where I am today. I must be getting emotional, but like really it's just like it, it goes without saying how happy that I am that I was able to meet them because they taught me so much about what it means to not only love a person but to do stuff for them and to sacrifice for them. And I know those sacrifices and I appreciate those sacrifices that they've made for us and also for the opportunities that they provided. Most definitely I just wanted them to know that I'm appreciative beyond compare and it's, I, love, I love them to death, like family. I'd like to say it's my faith in God and yet I'm so busy it's, it's hard to remember God sometimes throughout the day. We learned that aging is not an excuse to stop growing or giving. But I feel, I feel empathy for people that don't have a computer. You know, you've got the whole world at your fingertips. I love everybody here, Carol. There isn't anybody I don't love. They mean so much to me. If you have things outside of yourself, that if, and if you have like this craft that you can do and you're happy doing it, and that, but you can think about the person you were making it for and going to be giving it to, it just keeps your life going. You met those who lost their way, but found their way back. God just took the eye out of me and put him in. It's a whole new life for me. I feel like I'm accomplishing something other than nothing, other than bad. If I love myself, then I know I can love the next person. If I can help myself, then I know I can help the next person. I, I'm very self-made, that's what they call it. And we discovered that patriotism is alive. Both sides of the aisle, conservative, liberal, progressive, Democrat, Republican, understand wholeheartedly the sacrifices that these individuals, men and women, have made. So I think it's easy to get on board um, knowing that our freedom is because of those individuals. I'm proud of the Racine community because we were really the first in the nation to present this idea about housing our veterans through tiny houses. And that's the beauty of America, I think, is sharing your food, sharing your culture, and this being such a melting pot. And we found the motivators. When you're happy, you're more likely to make positive actions towards your diet, towards your exercise and physical routine, and you're more productive at work. I would say my purpose is to continue to encourage those that don't see themselves in books, now you see yourself in this book. <laughs> the potential is there. I would say that would be my purpose. I think what dance does is it, as any creative form, connects you to that person within you, that unique, valuable person that the world needs. Even though a situation may seem hopeless, take it back. Take it back into your own hands and become whoever you desire to be, and don't take no for an answer. And you saw hometown pride. I think Milwaukee is a great place to live, is a great place to grow a family. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to open a business here, uh, so it's embraced me and I embraced it. If you let yourself, there is it is such a rich experience living in Milwaukee, and you can Absolutely. really, really, really access so many different cultures and people and find the similarities. I wanted to do something that really highlighted 
Wisconsin in an interesting way. Um, and as you know, like we don't see Wisconsin on camera that often. It's just, it's not that typical. And to me, it's such a beautiful state full of such great people that I think it's nice to sort of show it you know, in, in a cinematic way. And we saluted those with big hearts who gave freely during the pandemic. Oprah Winfrey granting Positively Milwaukee an exclusive interview when choosing Milwaukee as one of her cities for $100,000 in pandemic relief. I am reminded of my own mother who was, uh, 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 you know, striving to take care of three kids in the city of Milwaukee and we were on welfare and so my desire to reach out and help people who were like myself comes from the fact that that was myself. Our commitment to hopeful and positive stories will continue into 2021. So let's all rejoice in the spirit of generous souls and believers in humanity. The stories of goodness are out there. We promise to tell them. It's been an incredible year. We first aired that at the end of last year. So I'm so excited because we're going to share more great Positively Milwaukee stories with you. Tell us about yours. Email us at PositivelyMilwaukee at TMJ4.com. We want to share those with the world. I'll be back with my quote of the week. Welcome back. I found this perfect quote for Valentine's Day. Now this comes from French novelist George Sand. His words, there is only one happiness in this life, to love and be loved. And we love you, our viewers. We want to thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us. We leave you with another glimpse of Wisconsin's winter wonderland, courtesy of photojournalist Ryan Whitaker. Have a great week, everybody.